Welcome to the Neck Mobility Awakening Sequence. This is a combination of using self-mild fascial release techniques using rad roller equipment combined with open and closed chain mobility. By the end of this practice, you should be able to see and feel more mobility in your neck extension, uh, your neck rotation, cervical spine rotation, and thoracic extension and rotation as well. So let's start by establishing what the current neck range of motion is. You can start by coming to the knees, press the hips all the way forward, place the hands on the fascia just right below the sternum bone. Then start to slide your neck forward and slide your neck back. Maintain a forward pressure of your hips, uh, pressing the glutes and engaging them forward as you do this. Move through about five repetitions forward and back, establishing that range. Notice that your cervical spine moves on that J curve going down and forward and then slightly back and up. Next, you move into translation of the cervical spine moving side to side. If your spine has difficult time accessing this range of motion, you can shave off your immobility by jutting your neck 45 degrees forward and right and then come back to center then 45 degrees forward and left. Eventually, over time, we'll start to shave off that immobility. Again, four to five repetitions. This is establishing your beginning range of motion. <clears throat> Come back to center, put that into a circle, moving forward, right, back, and left. You might be going counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on how you interpret the cue. As so long as you're moving in a circular pattern with your chin level with the ground, you're doing it correctly. Switch directions. Again, it helps to start by hitting four corners, and then eventually you want to smooth that out into a circular pattern, 360 degrees. Again, we're aiming for about five repetitions or so, establishing our open chain uh, joint mobility of the neck. Next, come into rotation. So, pressing the fascia down. Keep your neck extended as you do this. Rotate your neck to the right as far as you can. And then back to center. Other side. And back to center again. Lengthen. And all the while you're sipping air in and out through the nose. And once you've established that range, now let's move into a lateral bend. Inhale, lengthen. And reach your opposite jawbone up here. So instead of compressing down with one rear ear, you're reaching up with the opposite jawbone. Inhale, exhale, hinge at the hips to create a lap, switching sides, press the hips forward continuously, lengthen up through the jawbone that's facing the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees, create a lap to shock absorb. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees. Inhale. Now start to combine your lateral flexion with rotation and extension. Hold. Then come back to the center. Try the other side. Lateral flexion. Add your rotation and extension, working the scalp back towards the back scapula. Back to center. You might be there today, or if you'd like to combine that into a figure eight with the neck, bring your one ear down to your one shoulder. This might be the right side. Come into your rotation plus extension. Bring your chin down to your opposite shoulder and sweep up, moving in a figure eight pattern. Chin down, ear down, sweep up. Again, we're aiming for that rotation plus extension to shave off that immobility, those adhesions that may have formed in the vertebra, the joints. <clears throat> Once you find that smooth figure eight, you can enjoy that. And then come back to center, recalibrate, press the hips forward, lengthen through the spine, work on getting your head both up and back to reestablish a neutral posture. Now, we'll introduce our first rad roller piece of equipment. This is the Helix. This is uh, a nice, soft myofascial rolling tool uh, that has these little divots here that allow uh, the fascia to kind of collect, grab it, pull it up, and then move it creating pliability and increasing viscosity uh, within the tissues and underneath the tissues. So 
So imagine you have this big guy wire of muscle here uh, that also is encased in fascia. So you can kind of palpate it there and feel it. It's your sternocleidomastoid. So the idea with this um, self-myofascial release technique is to grab that, pull it back posterior, so pulling it behind you as you apply a stretch. So again, I'm just going to palpate it. You can t try this out with your hands just to feel where, uh, where you should be gripping. So you grip it with the helix and pull it towards the back of you as you rotate your head in the opposite direction. Let's do this about five to ten times. So first, you can just start by just breathing and maybe doing a little bit of circular action to flush the area. Just getting used to the pressure. And ideally, whenever you apply self myofascial release tools or techniques, you want to be in a state of calmness, never going into fight or flight. You'll hear me say this often, but it's so critical when you're rolling out the fascia that you're not inducing uh, elevated cortisol levels, elevated adrenaline, but you're doing the opposite and getting into parasympathetic nervous system tone. So I can start to feel that long myofascial train or web. Now I'm going to start to apply the pressure without uh, compressing any of my veins in my neck. So I don't want to uh, get my jugular or anything there. But I'm, I'm gripping it slightly and then slowly moving my chin towards my left shoulder. You might be doing it opposite if you're facing me, but just do your best. Again, pin the area, start to pull it back as you move through full rotation. And you can move along the length of that sheath. Again, you're tapping into uh, your sternocleidomastoid and also your scalenes. And this is one of the culprits for restricting your neck range of motion. So if you can loosen up that area, you'll find that as you apply your closed chain joint mobility drills, it becomes a lot easier. So take a, two more, a few more rounds. And then switch sides. Again, a little circular motion. Try to get this part, uh, the threaded part, on the fascia. Little circular actions. And it might be a little bit red afterwards, it's fine. And then making sure that you're in parasympathetic, pin it, pull it back as you move through your rotation. Again, pin, rotate, and you're brushing back around towards uh, the back of the neck. Try that a few more times. And this should not exceed a level four of discomfort on a pain, on a pain scale of one to ten. So make sure you maintain that level of intensity. Last two. And I've uh, become pretty used to these tools. It, it might look like I'm pushing a little bit harder. You can work up to that. And then the final SMR myofascial release tool will be utilizing the rad block and the rad roller, which is two balls connected together. You can place your equipment at the back of your mat. And we're aiming to get the balls to touch right out here, right about here on the uh, suboccipitals here. <clears throat> All right. So once you're here, if you put a little pressure on the block to pull the block away from your body, you'll create more traction. It's a nice way to go about it, but and also I'm getting a chest stretch here. So I start by just breathing, melting into it, allowing myself to drop into parasympathetic. And then next I'll come into rotation. So I'll look to one side. In this case, it's my right side. And back to center. And then try your other side. And back to center. Notice one side of the scalp or the skull will lift 
off of the ball, concentrating the force at the apex of the rad roller. If it feels too intense or it's above level four in pain, minimize how much you're rotating. So it might be a smaller rotation side to side. And once you've done about five repetitions of that, then you can try sliding. So moving in translation to the right and to the left. Leading with the jawbone or the ear, moving right and moving left. You're reminded that this is just the first part of opening the line that allows us to increase uh, neck extension and rotation. That's some thoracic extension and rotation. There are many pieces to this puzzle, but by uh, pairing up or tripling up on our efforts and sequentially moving and applying our activation drills through each of those areas will create a greater effect than if we were to just isolate one alone. Alright, and then slowly come up. Move your equipment to the side. We'll go right into close chain joint mobility with the neck. This is adapted from one of Scott Sonnen's uh, close chain joint mobility drills. Start with your hands pressing on the mat. Find the hairline, move into full neck flexion here. Establish that range. You can go a few times massaging the fascia in your scalp. Stimulating blood flow there. And then next, move into full flexion and then move your ear to one side and hold. Again, move into full flexion, move to the opposite side and hold. Keep moving through that semicircle, moving from the outer ear along the crown in flexion and back to the opposite ear. Breathe into it. It's best to do this on a softer surface like a yoga mat or a martial arts floor. I'm using my Naboso proprioceptive barefoot training technology mat developed by Dr. Emily Spleichel. Big fan of this just because it gives me that extra uh, tactile feedback from the um, slightly varied surface. And then come back to center. Whew, <laughs> can fix your hair there. Ah, so let's retest the neck range of motion quickly. So forward and back. Notice if there's any more freedom there. And you should be able to feel the difference after doing uh, that sequence. Side to side, less restriction, more mobility. Isolate just the neck. Circles and circles in the opposite direction. Hmm. All right. Come to hands and knees. We'll start with uh, cat cow. Exhale, tuck and round, lifting through the mid back. Inhale, shine the heart forward. Drop the chest down. Here, establish your range of motion in your thoracic spine. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, shine forward. And exhale, release. Take hips to heels, child's pose. Arms extended, hips all the way back towards the heels, elbows lifted. Inhale, lift the hips, shift your shoulders forward, lower all the way down to the mat, carefully. Inhale, lift the front body, coming into baby cobra, hold, contract the quads, the entire leg. Exhale, press back, child's pose, ha. Again, inhale to lift, exhale, carefully lower down. Inhale, lift the front body, baby cobra. Exhale, press back, in child's pose. We'll start by priming thoracic mobility uh, in rotation. Start by peeling one hand up. In this case, the left hand touches the arm in, this, in the chest all the way up to full extension. Exhale, thread the arm underneath the body. Let the shoulder rest on the ground. Again, inhale, articulating 
And getting that feedback. Back to our head. Inhale. See if you can line up your left shoulder on top of your right. Exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Come back to center. Switch sides. Inhale, opposite hand up. Look up. Testing your neck range of motion here. Chin towards the shoulder. Exhale, thread the arm underneath the body. And inhale. Reach up, stretch up. And exhale, thread. Inhale. Exhale, ujjayi breath, stimulating your parasympathetic. Last one, inhale. And exhale. And come back to center. Take one round of cat-cow, evening out the spine. And then prepare to come onto your back, grabbing your equipment, your red roller. And the idea for this Self-mild fascial release technique is to place the ball in your upper thoracic spine, so generally right between your shoulder blades. Take your time lowering your body onto this. This can be pretty intense for people, so I encourage you just to take your time and relax. If this is too intense, the other variation would be to lie down on your helix. I'm going to demonstrate with the rad roller ball so that I can uh, facilitate. The ball is placed right over, it covers about two facets, so I want to really create an impact in that area. So the first piece is just breathing, imagining your fascia sort of melting down and grounding. And the second piece, if you find, especially if you find your head having trouble just being on the ground, Place your hands like this underneath your head just to cradle the head. And then start to drift your legs to the right. Come back to center. Drift your legs to the left. And back to center. Take your time. Moving right to moving left. And just noticing how when your legs shift that it impacts the force that you're placing on your fascia. This tends to be a really uh, tight area for people due to not releasing residual tension from being in a slightly rounded forward position. So over time, that fascia tends to get more dense. And the fibers lay across each other in such a way that it creates an adhesion or really thick and dense guy wire like fascia. This is the beginning stages of starting to manually work through that. Next, you can start to come into little flexion and then back down. Try pushing your feet into the ground as you do this and spreading your shoulder blades apart. And just got a little self-adjustment there. It's totally normal if you feel the self-adjustment. And I'm going pretty high with my flexion extension. You might start here, just lifting and lowering. The idea is that you move the joint through flexion and extension with breath initially. And then you can move into shearing or rotation or even lateral bending to start to move the fascial web away from the muscular tissue, increasing viscosity, increasing pliability, flushing um, toxins out, and incre increasing the joint nutrition to that area. Next, come up halfway and hold, move into a lateral bend side to side. Make sure to breathe as you're doing this. And then you can come into your shearing, so rotation. Bring one shoulder down, looking to your right or left, on the opposite side. Again, this can be a little intense, so. Listen to your body. If you go above a four, back off a little bit more. Switch tools. And slowly lower down. Be cautious of how you get up. I like to roll over to one side, press the body up, and immediately go into my corresponding open chain or and closed chain joint mobility drills. 
starting child's pose. Inhale, lift the hips, step the right foot between the two hands, feet on railroad tracks. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to pray. Roll the shoulders back as you come in chest expansion. Squeeze your rhomboids together. You might be able to feel more activation there than you normally do. Exhale, shoot and round. Stretch the shoulder blades apart. It's like gunslinger. Inhale. If you're familiar with the into flow moves, or integrating into flow into asana, combining joint mobility with the traditional pose you see in classical asana. Andre asana is the yoga pose here. And hold. Bend the front knee, reach up and out of the waist. Practice placing your head in extension, lifting your chest and breastbone. And hold, stabilize, contracting your core. Inhale. And exhale, hands through prayer. Twist to your right, hooking the elbow on the outside of the knee, using the elbow as leverage to push you into a twist. Come out with control. Inhale, head and extension. Exhale, hands through prayer. Twist, ringing of the spine. Three more. Inhale, reach up, stretch up. And exhale, twist. Last two. Inhale, head and extension. And exhale, twist. Inhale. Exhale, twist and hold. Option to curl the back toe under and lift the back knee slowly and gradually. Continue to twist and revolve the body. Hold. Maybe still on your knee and that's fine. Keep on holding, pressing the knee against the arm, the arm against that knee, creating a feedback loop. And then lower the hands down, frame the front foot, step back to either a high plank or a modified plank by dropping the knees. Shift your shoulders forward, lower all the way down to the mat. Give up the legs, inhale, baby cobra, lift as high as you can go, waking up your multifidine extensors. Exhale, press back, child's pose. Inhale, lift the opposite leg forward, setting up for kneel and crescent lunge. Sweep the arms up, inhale. Exhale, hands to prayer. Roll the shoulders back as you open the chest, sinking into your hip flexor. Exhale, shoot and round. Inhale, glide forward, chest expansion, possibly lifting, lifting the chin here. Exhale, shoot and round. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose, ha, down to the back of the throat. Last two, inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale, hold. Bend the front knee, lift your hands straight up, press your palms together, place your head in extension, hold. Exhale, hands through prayer, twist to the opposite side, generating that force, twisting from the elbow. Inhale, rise with control, with stability. Head in extension. Exhale, hands through prayer and twist. Inhale, reach up, stretch up, look up, stabilize from your pelvic girdle. Exhale, hands through prayer and twist. Last two, inhale, find the repetition, moving into each repetition with perfect form, perfect alignment. Last one, inhale, stretch up, head and extension. Exhale, hands through prayer and twist. Hold. Curl the back toe under. Decide if you'd like to lift your back knee. Keep ringing out the spine. And breathe. Lengthen your head against gravity. Maybe eventually rotating it up towards the ceiling. And float the hands down. Step back to a high plank. In Chaturanga, low plank, or baby cobra. Inhale, upward facing dog, and hold. Retracting your scapula together. Exhale, downward facing dog. Dynamic, walk the feet out right and left. Several times, bending the knees to allow yourself to prioritize having a flat back here. The tendency is to work straight legs with the expense of rounding out the back. So you come into kind of like a partial Push up with your hips elevated. Better to bend the knees and press your shoulders back as far as you can behind your wrists first. Unshrug the shoulders and then walk one heel at a time down, maintaining flatness in the back. Come to regular downward facing dog and hold. Drive the heels down as much as you're able. 
Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees, walk or jump the feet to meet the hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Keep the weight forward. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, circle sweep, arms up. Exhale, hands to prayer, hands by your side. Mountain pose. Set the hips down low enough that the fingertips graze the floor. And then sweep your arms up, coming into Uksatasana variation. Chair pose. Sweep your right hand back as you look back. Again, testing your neck mobility here. Exhale, right hand forward. Inhale, left hand back as you look back. And exhale. Inhale, open the chest, reach the shoulders in opposite directions, gaze it back. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more time on each side. Inhale, stretch and reach. Keep the knees together and in one line. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Hold. Forward fold with an exhale over the legs. Ha. Take it slow. Inhale. Halfway lift. Pull the belly in tight here. You should see that your ribs are visible from the side. I'll demonstrate here. I'm hollowing out the belly. Exhale. Fold over the legs. Step back to a high plank. Shift your shoulders forward, wrap the elbows in so they kiss the rib cage as you come down, chaturanga. Flip the feet one at a time. Inhale, upward facing dog, retracting your shoulder blades together. Looking up with your chin, testing your neck mobility. Exhale, downward facing dog, ha. Again, if you have tight hamstrings, you're bending the knees slightly to create an actual tilt at your pelvis, prioritizing the flat back and then eventually driving the heels down. If it's easy for you to get your heels down, scoot your feet back slightly, put pressure on the outer edges of the feet, melt your heart towards your thighs or towards the floor. Breathe here. Two rounds of breath, inhale and exhale. Again, inhale and exhale. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, bend the knees towards your belly, walk or jump the feet to meet the hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold over the legs, all the way down. Inhale, circle sweep, arms up, look up, place the head in extension. Exhale, hands to prayer, hands by your side, mountain pose, reestablish neutral posture. Final soft myofascial release technique, moving into the thorax. Take your rad roller, slide down on your back. This one is highly effective for opening the front line. You can also use the, uh, the single rad round here as well. The idea is that you're putting pressure uh, both down vertically and then also down horizontally towards your feet or towards your hips. So it kind of looks like this. I'm angling, if I was to uh, show you above my body, I'm angling down and towards my feet like this. So we'll start with just tapping into that area and it's not on the bone, it's just right below the xiphoid process. And I'm just moving along the perimeter where I feel, you can see right here, here's the outer part of my ribs. I'm moving in that whole triangle area, pushing down and away. And being careful not to make myself short of breath, but just starting to get some blood flow to that area. This is the easiest way to access this area, the most modified. Next, you can start doing like a shearing side to side. Going against the grain. And I can, you can see that I'm really using quite a bit of muscle to get in there. So once you once you've done this for a while, you can start to get more comfortable with a good amount of pressure, but at first it can be a little bit invasive, especially if you've never done any self myofascial release there or had any manual ma ma manipulation there. And you can also apply a, sh a rotational force. This one's really effective as well. So you're just kind of pushing down and turning it like a knob. And I highly recommend combining the cervical, the back of the thoracic, and the thorax in one session, just like we're doing, and uh, implementing those, those drills immediately after so that you really maintain the range of motion that you're creating with self-myofascial release.
relax in the last position. You can keep doing the other version on your stomach if you'd like. And if you'd like to try more advanced variation here, simply place your round roller ball right here. Let's get up a little bit here. So, in a sphinx position or a forearm position, you can just go shearing force side to side. Again, this is really also nice with the ball because you can really target certain areas by getting a little bit lower to the ground. And then, if you'd like to take it even a step further, place the ball on that very thick fascial sheath. And then lift up into baby cobra, squeezing the shoulder blades together. And then come back down. Again, lift up and come back down. You want to make it a little bit more complex. Lift up, rotate right and center. Lift up, rotate left and center. Again, lift up, rolling to one side and center. Lift up, rolling to the opposite side. Take your time coming up from that one. Replace your equipment back into the block. And then let's implement that into our yoga awakening drill. Starting in a mountain pose. Keep the hips down low. Fingertips touch the floor. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands through prayer. Twist to one side, rotating to the right. Placing the elbow against the knee. Eventually, the idea is to work your shoulder down far enough that you can extend your arms eventually, opening thoracic spine in a twist, gazes up, hands do prayer, exhale, forward fold over the legs, forehead down, inhale, heart lifts, flat back, exhale, fold, again, keep the hips down low, arms up high, Utkatasana, hands do prayer, twist, try to get the shoulder as close to the knee as you can. Bring the hands as close to prayer as you can. Once you're there, extend the arms, gaze is up, and breathe. Keep the two knees in one line. Hands through prayer, exhale, forward fold over the legs, ha. Inhale, half lift, come to fingertips. Exhale, fold, body down. Step back to a high plank, finding your hollow body. Shift your shoulders forward, low plank, elbows touch the legs. Inhale, upward facing dog, really stretch back here. Look up, head back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ha. Two breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Think about doing baby cobra in your upper and middle back. Inhale. And exhale. Every pose is a breathing pose. You're constantly creating torque, pressing the palms into your mat, especially if you're using an abosa mat. You'll really activate all of the little muscles and awaken the fascia in your hands. Inhale, take your right leg up, three-legged dog. Flex the foot, keep the hips squared for this sequence. Exhale, step the foot through the two hands, back knee down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands through prayer. Twist to your right, hooking the elbow on the outside of the knee. Hold. You can stay here. Otherwise, curl the back to under, lift the knee and hold. Try to get your shoulder as close to your knee as you can. Ring out your spine, keep your hips squared. Activate everything in this pose. So drive through the back heel, firming up the quad. Press into your elbow against your knee or back of shoulder against knee. Option to open out the arms. Option to slowly rotate your eye gaze up towards the ceiling. And breathe. When you're ready, hands come back to prayer. Come out of your twist. Hold. Spin your back heel down 45 degrees. Option to have the hands separated, shoulder distance apart. Easiest variation, slightly wider if you have tight shoulders. Option to press your palms together, place your head in extension and hold. Inhale and exhale. Place the hands to prayer, hinge forward until your body is in line with your back leg. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist again to your right, hooking the elbow on the outside of the knee. Grounding through your back leg. If you're not quite able to get there, you can work your strength by just going here or maybe even taking the hand down and reaching the opposite hand up. Just 
Slowly come out with control. Inhale, arms up. Look up. Exhale, hinge forward, plant the palms. Carefully step back to a high plank. Chaturanga, low plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Really stretching the fascia in the front. Hang back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ha. Two breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, left leg up. Three-legged dog. Exhale, step the foot through the two hands. Back knee down. Inhale, arms up. Head back. Exhale, hands through prayer. Twist to your left and hold. Breathe here. Try to work the hands in line with the heart. Slowly curl the back toe under, lift the back knee, and breathe. Always have the option, if you'd like, to open out your arms. Trace your eye gaze up towards the ceiling. And breathe. When you're ready, float the hands back to pray. Come out of your twist. Spiral the back heel down 45 degrees, two hips facing forward. Option for arms separated, shoulder distance, or press the palms together, working in training neck extension. Inhale, knit the ribs in, find your hollow body, extend upward, and exhale. Float the hands to prayer, hinge forward, modified variation first, hinge and rotate. Option to take one hand down, peel the opposite hand up, holding yourself there with control. Otherwise, hands to prayer, ring out the spine while maintaining a warrior one leg stance. Keep driving your back, outer edge of foot down. Keep working to press the hands back to a prayer position and hold. Sipping your in and out through the nose. Slowly come out of your twist. Inhale, arms up. Look up. Exhale, hands forward. Step back to a high plank. Exhale, chaturanga low plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ha. Two to three breaths here, recalibrate, press the shoulders far away from the, far away from the wrists, drive your heels down, it's easy for you to get your heels down, bring your feet back and hold. Inhale, lift the heels, exhale, bend the knees, walk or jump the feet to meet the hands, inhale, half lift, exhale, fold the body down. Inhale, circle sweep, arms up. Exhale, hands to prayer, and hands by your side, mountain pose. And final self mount fascial release technique, utilizing the helix, make your way down to your mat. This is a flushing of the entire back line in preparation for our peak poses, camel and fish pose, modified. So, start here. It may get caught up in your shirt, so be careful with that. Just hold the head. Lift your hips and bring your hips close to your heels and then far away from your heels. Breathing the entire time. You tend to get a little tangled. Right, yoga wear, do your best. If you find a tender area, work there, hang out there. Explore that area, put breath there. Maybe you're just hanging out. Letting things melt, letting things adjust. Be warned that when you're using this specific tool, those little threads are so powerful in gripping um, the superficial layers of the fascia and pulling it up that it sometimes leaves little red marks so that kind of look like scratches, but they go away in a couple of days. But it's just really effective in mobilizing that area. And then once you've done about two minutes, estimating here, once you've done about two minutes of flushing, I'll call them minutes, you can do a little bit of shear force if you'd like. So for the shear, I'm going to place this right on my problem area, which is that thick fascia um, right in between the shoulder blades, and move right to the left. Shearing force side. And roll the body carefully off of your equipment. So prepare for a peak pose. 
Take two fists, place them between your knees. Press your hips all the way forward. So glutes are fully engaged. You can take your hands uh, to the front of your hips to give you some feedback of how much you want to be pressing. Your glutes should be taut to the touch here. Place your hands starting with the fingertips facing down. Press the glutes forward. Slowly trace your eye gaze up towards the crease between the ceiling and the wall. Roll the shoulders back. Work your shoulder blades together, hand down, and hold. If you feel comfortable, take your head a little bit higher, gaze it up towards the ceiling. Start with the modified variation first. Start to increase on the depth. Slowly come down, hinging at the hips, controlling yourself all the way down. Rest for a moment. Second round option, fingers face up. Again, press the hands right onto the sacral plate. Roll the shoulders back, glutes engaged to stabilize you. Lift your head, arch your upper middle back and spine, and breathe. Keep your glutes engaged your whole time. Option to extend one hand back and hold. Back to center, back to right hip, opposite hand. Think of driving like you do in the other tactical tripod moves. Hold. And slowly release one breath at a time. Float the hips down, rest for a moment. You can stick with that variation or go into your full version of camel. I like to start by getting them with the modifications. Fingers face up, glutes engaged. Roll the shoulders back, take the head back. Go into here and then swing the hand back. Or you can just drop one hand down and then the other. Rip the feet, roll the shoulders back, lift the heart. Look back, go back. And change hands to the hips. Restack the spine. Slowly come down. Counter pose immediately. Rabbit pose or modified rabbit pose. It's a deep uh, flexion of the entire spine, specifically in the thoracic and cervical. So start by gripping your out outer parts of the feet. It should look like this. Once you have that grip, round out your back like a hollow body. So you can actually get a lot out of the pose just by being here. So imagine like your gunslinger move like this. Do that, but grip your feet, roll forward. And you can be here for starters. Eventually, you're aiming to get the crown of your head on the floor. So slowly lift your hips until the crown of head touches and the forehead touches your knees. Once you have that, you can pull with your lats, pull your feet, releasing residual tension in your upper thoracic, your cervical. Do not look around in this posture. There's a lot of pressure on your cervical spine. Take your time, hold and breathe. Go right to your edge now. Work your shoulders away from your ears. Keep that scapular depression, that shoulder pack happening and pull. And release. Sit the hips back down. Keep your chin tucked as you roll up one vertebra at a time. Restacking, recalibrating. And then swing the legs out in front. <clears throat> Do one more deep neck extension classical asana. Modified variation here. Lifting your chest, pointing your toes, and slowly taking your head back. Your modification for today. If you'd like to do the full variation, come down onto your back. Bring your hands underneath your body. It's great for releasing residual tension in your elbows as well. And practice pointing the toes, lifting the heart, and coming onto your elbows a couple of times. So that you're getting there from muscular action and awareness versus forcing your body into a stretch that it's not quite ready for. So if you like, you can arch your spine, lace the crown of your head on the ground, remove your hands eventually. I like to just drive from the elbows. And then when my elbows are here, I can lift a little bit higher, get that tactical feedback from crown of head touching the floor. Point the toes, hold. Next variation, one hand back, elbows touch, other hand back, 
maybe eventually both hands back and hold. If you feel any pain, modify, regret. Hold. And release. Come down with control. Counter pose, knees to chest. Reach up, grab your opposite elbows. Pull your knees in tight and hold. In breath through the nose and out breath through the nose. And grab the knees, rock and roll a couple of times. Back up to the seated. Extend your legs. Seated final twist, modified. So easiest level here, second level here with the foot across. Here in second level, the uh, right foot comes across, the right hand comes behind for support. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist, and carve the elbow on the outside of the knee to generate a twist of thoracic spine. The hardest level variation would be to bend your bottom leg, keep your foot planted on the floor, and keep your opposite hip on the floor. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, twist. Again, using your feedback, your body's natural pressure points, origami, folding your body with perfect alignment and symmetry on either side. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Eventually, if you want to go for the bind, reach the hands underneath the legs, reach your opposite hand back, lift your heart, and twist. And we'll stick with the modified today. Final breath here, go to your edge, hold, and unwind, counter twist to one side, back to center, even out the spine, with the boat modified, wrists at the same height as shoulders, sitting back on the fleshy part of the hips, and then switch to the other side, legs extended, easiest variation here, second variation here, start with that, inhale, lengthen, exhale, carve and reach. And I'm using the feedback. So I could collapse here. We want to go into extension, lifting the thorax, lifting the sternum, and then rotating the cervical spine. Active bottom leg or bottom foot makes a difference here. Do your best. And when and if you're ready, bend the bottom leg. See that your hip bone doesn't come up, but it's anchored down. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, twist. We're trying to apply a great amount of force in thoracic rotation. Inhale and lengthen. Exhale and twist. Option to carve the hand underneath the leg. Maybe reaching the opposite hand around. Aiming to lift and extend in thoracic spine. Again, we'll stay here to prioritize thoracic lift instead of going into rounding. Inhale and lengthen. Exhale, twist. Looking around behind you. And then unwind. <clears throat> One counter twist on the opposite side. Come back to a modified boat. Wrist set shoulder height, shoulders stacked. You can elevate one toe and then the other. Great for core. Shoulders packing, avoiding any rounding. Don't want to go here. Make sure the, uh, the column of the spine stays in its natural S curve with neutrality. And then release. Extend the legs, mindfully roll the body back. If you have any lower back issues, you can get to there. Do a modified variation. Our final heart opener. Bend the knees, feet flat, lift the hips. Walk one shoulder in and then the other shoulder in. If you can, reach your hands down towards your heels and put pressure against the back of the hands to the inner ankles. Lengthen your neck. This is a preparation for things like plow. Try to knit your ribs in as much as you can. Draw the belly in. And notice the feedback that you're getting in the back of your neck. So you're actually pressing your skull into the floor as you move your scapula away from you. So moving into that shoulder pack again. Hold. Breathe. And release. Slowly come down. And 
extend the legs. Hands resting close to the body, palms facing up. Close the eyes, let the feet fall open. And then start to breathe and systematically relax each and every muscle group, starting with the feet and ankles. As you inhale, concentrate on the area. As you exhale, release. As you inhale, observe the belly rising. As you exhale through the nose, observe the belly falling. Again, inhale. And exhale. your body to be still. Be here for about two to three minutes, allowing the nervous system to recalibrate, reorganize. Start to implement these small and gradual changes in the myofascial web. Relax the shoulders, the jaw. Relax your eyes in their sockets. Do your best to oh, never skip savasana, but treat it as an important posture, just as important as your warm up or joint mobility drills. Start to bring awareness to your breath. Allow yourself a full, unrestricted inhale and a full, unrestricted exhale. One more time. Inhale fully and exhale fully. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes, awakening the physical body, keeping the eyes closed. And the knees slowly start to roll to your right side. Okay? Coming into a fetal position, knees bent, head resting in hands. Using the top arm, slowly press yourself up to a seated position. And keep your eyes closed to retain the qualities of Savasana. Take a moment to settle into an upright spine. Practice your open monitor during meditation. So feeling with all of your senses, your sense of sound, your sense of smell as you breathe in, your sense of the temperature on your skin, your sense of freedom in the areas that were previously more bound. And join the hands in front of the heart. Take a moment of gratitude for the time spent in unwinding and starting to consciously become aware of the areas that we tend to tune out. By putting more focus on those areas, we can slowly start to implement change in a safe and progressive manner. So in gratitude for your practice, it's a pleasure and honor to teach and share this practice. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely try this practice again a couple of times during the week to make the most practice, make the most of your practice. This can be done on a low intensity day and it's excellent for breaking up those thick myofascial adhesions and there's definitely progress in your practice if you're consistent and patient. Thanks for joining.